Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Great to be here with you uh, today. Uh, integration is sexy. I like that. Um, I, think, uh, I think that's right. Um, so I want to, as, as Tyler said, what I want to talk to you about is really a set of observations and um, sort of gut instinct that kicked in, have been kicking in lately, um, that have really stimulated some, some pretty deep questions about where integration's going and, in, and, and really have led us to, at Forrester to this question. Are we entering a, a phase where integration is actually the foundation uh, for our applications going forward? It's the basis for the platforms we use uh, for applications going forward. As you'll see, we think the answer is yes. We don't think we have all the, the answers about how this plays out yet, but I want to share with you what we've observed and what we're thinking and um, would love to hear from you all afterwards as well because uh, we're all going to figure this out together. So first, a little about me because you may, not, you may or may not know anything about me. Um, as, you can, as you can see, I'm not a kid. Uh, I've been doing, been looking at, at software markets, middleware markets uh, specifically for almost 30 years. Um, I've learned to trust my gut. Um, and that's, that's part of what is operating here. There's, a, there's just a set of observations um, that, that I think we can make that, that lead us to uh, some, some interesting conclusions. And, and my, my focus is on application development and delivery. Um, so I'm not on operations, not, not on uh, data centers and data center operations, but more how do we deliver the, the apps that really drive business? Um, it's, as, as you know, it's changed a great deal, uh, certainly over 30 years and, and even over the last couple of years. So anyway, um, let's start. So first observation is this one, that when we look at modern apps, the apps that, that we see today um, coming out of, of uh, corporations, coming out of web native uh, companies, um, these apps are distributed by, in, in nature. Now you could argue that, that Apps have been distributed for some time, but these, these apps have unprecedented distribution. They may be used APIs that are running from some service provider, some, some of the data is resident on-premise, perhaps, and then the functions, uh, the major functions in the cloud. Um, th these apps are distributed, and that means, then, that integration has to be built into the architecture of those applications, I would argue, how they're built. So integration needs to be built in, not bolted on. And as you know, we've, for, for many, many years, integration has been bolted on. It's an afterthought. Oh, we're going to build this application. Great, we need data on our suppliers. OK, well, that's in the SAP. And so let's build the integration link. But the, the building of the actual business process was a separate uh, exercise. You know, it's kind of like integration, security, these other kind of important things were always bolt-ons, uh, not built in. So how do, we, um, how do we reach this conclusion? Well, first of all, I have to say, um, I've, been, I've been looking after distributed systems. I, I, started working, uh, I started working as an analyst covering Corba. Anybody remember Corba? Oh my god, my people. Um, <laughs> And, and one of the comments I heard um, from, from a customer way back when was, I hate distributed systems. Why are you doing this? Why are we doing this? Uh, they're so hard. I hate them. I hate building them. I hate running them. Well, we're just doing more and more distribution, right? I mean, it, we just keep, because, you know, we just, we just go there. Why? Why do we go there? Well, these are the four reasons. You know, when you look at internet scale and performance, never mind enterprise scale, internet scale, it's global. Um, you've got to have, you've got to be able to deliver data, function, experiences, whatever it happens to be, worldwide. You've got to deliver uh, with performance at scale. Um, you don't do that with a big centralized mainframe. You don't do that with, you know, with, with centralized systems. It has to be distributed. Openness. We're in the middle of an, inc uh, an incredible time with all kinds of functionality that's available through APIs that are largely standardized and in, in in, in, at least in the API structure. There's still, you know, there's still work to be done. Lots and lots of standards that, that we can take advantage of in, in semantics and so forth. Um, we want this. We need this. We need openness. We need to be able to go with our applications where we need to go. We can't be locked out. 
Um, never mind locked in, locked out. Um, access to innovation. You want to do machine learning? It's an API away. It's in running in, in somebody's cloud. It's an API away. You want to do Internet of Things? You don't have to build all the infrastructure to process your, you know, the data coming off of your endpoints. It's, a, it's a, a, an API away. Um, we want that. We need that. We need to keep moving with, uh, with our customers, our markets, and take advantage of technology. And then the last is uh, a point that, that Tyler was on earlier, speed and flexibility in delivering applications. You know, part of why, part of why we're going to more distributed uh, apps is because if we don't have to build it, we can access it through an API. That's much faster. It's a much faster way for us to deliver. Plus, it's more flexible. We can strip that API out and go to somebody else's API if we want. You see this with open source, with people um, using open source um, very flexibly within their, uh, within their, uh, their software development, uh, their application development architectures. So we, we, pay our, we pay a price because distributed systems are more complicated, but the business imperatives that we're trying to meet force us to go down that path. So anyway, let's talk about the, um, the observations, the things that, I've, that, are, that are saying to me that something is going on here. There's a change happening here. First use case, very obvious case of distributed, uh, distributed uh, computing is uh, Internet of Things. Um, these, these applications are coming on strong because there's a lot of data that's available out there from sensors, from products, from uh, engines, manufacturing, vehicles. I mean, there's, we, are, we have instrumented a lot of the physical world, and this data is now available. If you're going to process this data and, and make some make some, uh, gain some insights or, or do things like predictive maintenance or something like that, you are fundamentally using a distributed architecture to, to do that work. You've got, pro you've got uh, information gathering going on the edge. You can't just pump all that data into your uh, analytic routines. There's a lot of junk in there. There's a lot of garbage in there, stuff that doesn't matter. So we put in place intermediate processing, and we munge the data to figure out what, what is really important out of this, these streams that tell us uh, important things about our business. It's fundamentally distributed, fundamentally about data movement and processing in different places. Second case, business process. Um, we've been doing a lot of work. You could say that business process is sexy again um, because organizations are so desperately trying to, to automate their operations now, particularly those that the operations that affect the customer experience, if those aren't automated, the customer experience breaks down. So there's a tremendous ups, upswelling of, of support now and, and of interest in business process. And so you say, well, these are, these are just process flows. They rely so heavily on integration. This is like the Achilles heel of a lot of business process uh, initiatives that we see, is that the integration architecture they're sitting on is actually inadequate. It's, it doesn't scale, it's not fast enough, it doesn't address enough sources, et cetera, and it's not well integrated with the business process design uh, that they're, uh, you know, that they're uh, employing in the, in the architecture. The thing, that, the thing that flipped the switch here and made, and made uh, a business process sexy is customer journey analysis. So many people now are using customer journey analysis to determine what they need to do with their automation, what priorities they need to do. And customer journeys span departments, they span organizations, they span you and your partners. I mean, they, they are fundamentally distributed and they involve, uh, they rely on integration. Uh, less obvious use case. Um, there are a number of applications out there that we don't really have a good names for. I call them embedded analytics or embedded BI. And these are applications that, are, that gather data and apply uh, an analysis of data to tell us what's going on in our supply chain or with our customers or in our operations. Um, some of these are, are commercial products where uh, the customer actually sees uh, real time what's going on with their, with their account. There's a lot of... Um, a lot of integration behind the scenes in, in grabbing the appropriate data, oftentimes in real time, in analyzing that data while it's in motion, uh, oftentimes, sometimes not, 
But it's fundamental, and then, oh, and then, by the way, you've got to manage, um, you've got to manage identities and permissions because you're pulling data from lots of different sources. It's an integration problem. And as these applications come on stream, um, I think the, the, the integration capabilities sitting behind that support these, uh, these scenarios are going to become uh, obvious pain points, obvious, uh, I think. Number four. Um, our business of delivering applications is itself distributed. So these days when you talk to uh, development teams, how, they, how they're delivering their applications, they're all either on the way or trying to get to agile, continuous integration, continuous delivery. This is automating the pipelines, it's even a, 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 a flow analogy, the pipelines of starting with the idea all the way through to deployment. And there are a variety of tools in your typical CI, CD pipeline that development teams themselves integrate. They build those distributed uh, environments in order to serve their, per their business function, which is deliver, deliver software. And man, there's a lot of work that goes into those building those pipelines. So part of it is self-inflicted because developers like the latest and greatest and they may swap out a tool and swap in a new one. Uh, they, may, they may change the composition of the pipeline. They may create lots and lots of, of uh, clusters that they're targeting. I mean, but the point is it's a distributed problem. It involves integration of tooling and of, of other related facilities in order to deliver software and, and software changes. Um, Interesting that, that just the, the, our whole world as developers is, is, is we can observe this uh, set of issues there as well. Last point, last case I want to put up here is, is what I'm calling an emerging use case. Um, and that is what I'm just calling microservices designs. Microservices designs takes in a multitude of, of sins. Um, but certainly designing software in very small uh, um, you know, uh, uh, self-defined and communicate, you know, integrate, uh, communicating uh, components. Um, I can't believe I just said the word component again, but that's really what this is. Somebody just called microservices SOA for the hip. Um, but, uh, but anyway, it's, these, are, these are small units of software, small uh, deliverables, um, they, and they tend to want to live where they need to live, and they tend to be very much aligned with the serverless ideas that we, we heard, serverless services we, we heard about earlier. They're, they're very much aligned with APIs. Um, fundamentally, when people go to this design, they're building networks of microservices, but also they tend to be deployed in different places, and the work tends to get uh, distributed. So. This, this is the future of software delivery, and it takes us, you know, hell, you know right, hell for leather right into a big series of integration uh, problems uh, that we've got to solve. Because, why? Because we're trying to create better software, faster, more flexible, and this microservice des designs are really effective in doing that. So, um, these, are the, these are the observations. Now, what, what does this mean? I think when I look at this set of, of cases, I think that it means that we're building an integration, certainly, when we're doing any of those, those uh, use cases that I outlined. Integration is fundamental. Communication is fundamental to what we're doing. And I think, that may, I think it really means that the foundation for our application architectures is now integration. It's not app service. It's not database. It's integration. Um, and what do I mean by integration? Because we, we ought to be clear about this. Integration means, has meant multiple things over the years. This is what I think it means in this context. Very, let's start at a very high level and then you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get you know, more, more specific as we go. But I think it means connectivity writ large, all kinds of connectivity, um, client side, server side, APIs, microservices, all kinds of connectivity. Um, communication, the ability to communicate, to call and receive a response from an API, to map semantics uh, of data and, and of functions, um, uh, communications uh, ac across uh, trust boundaries, um, all kinds of communications that we need to, to manage, uh, you know, to be able to set them up. 
I think it means coordination. Part of what we're doing, part of what's happening here in these, in these use cases is that one team doesn't do the whole app. Multiple people are coordinating, their, their, are contributing, and teams will coordinate. They will compose or assemble, or they will, if they're dependent on an API and they want to change their application and it's going to affect that API or vice versa, they'll coordinate with that API, that API producer so that their application doesn't break. There's all kinds of sort of collaboration and coordination that's going on, a coordination of, of trust boundaries and so forth, trust identities and so forth. And lastly, control. We need to be able to manage. We need to be able to manage operations, security, performance, all the illities uh, out there. Um, so that's what I mean, that's what I mean by integration, and that's what the foundation, uh, this foundation I think is emerging, is really going to have to deliver for us uh, as developers. So we can, we're starting to, so we can observe these use cases, but we're also starting to gather data that's saying to us that, that the world is changing, that, that integration uh, patterns and the kinds of integration work that developers are doing is, is shifting. So a little, little bit of an eye chart, a big year forbearance on this. What I've got here is, at the bottom is a, what I'm thinking of as established integration techniques. So you've got APIs uses, using ACID transactions, I, the case where at least 30% of my integration is running on premise. Um, and then uh, I'm doing data sync for at least 50% of my, uh, in at least 50% of my SaaS uh, uh, installs. This is, this to me is, is, is pretty well, these are pretty well established practices. Um, so you can see what the, and these are, this is results from developers, by the way. So this is developers reporting on what they do. So you can see what the, what the results are here. Then you look at the top, the new integration techniques. I've color coded them. So integration in the cloud is the light blue. You can see, wow, 30% of integration in the cloud, just about up there with 30% um, of integration on, on premise. 90% of integration on crowd, look, cloud, look at that. There's a lot of people, a lot of developers that are doing 90 plus percent, or at least 90 percent of their of their integration in a cloud. Um, that's that's new. That's pretty notable. Um, and then use of, of use of APIs, SaaS APIs for integration. Pretty pretty notable result here as well. Look at the API results in green. Um, you know, restful uh, one IP, API call branching out to to many apps. Um, that's that's pretty uh, avant for a lot of, a lot of uh, folks. That's coming along. Um, APIs using non-traditional transaction models, eventual consistency and so forth um, coming along. And then lastly, microservices, you can see, is starting to, starting to really come along, although there's still a lot of microservice design use in development that doesn't get into production, but we know that's happening. We know that's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. So. These, these data, I think, say to us that because to accomplish their goals, the developers are, are doing integration and they are looking at some pretty new patterns in order to satisfy their needs. Um, you know, if I'm in microservices, I'm probably pushing on APIs really hard, as well as microservices design and all of the coordination that goes on you know, within those. Um, so. What I think we're seeing is, a, a, I, we know we're in a new era. I'm calling the current era the cloud era, because uh, that's what everybody calls it. Um, I don't have a better name. Uh, I think the cloud era followed the web era. Um, and I think we can identify some of, the some of the major points that distinguish, or characteristics that distinguish the cloud era from the, the web era. Um, one is, uh, and I put in microservices and containers, we could have been in public clouds. There's a range of technologies that, that have come into wide use in the cloud era that weren't in use in the prior era. Now, one of the things I'm showing in this, on, in this slide, and it's an important thing for us to figure out as a community, is um, for each era, a what I call a control point emerged. This was a product category, it was a market, and it was the point at which, on which the, the application ran and we managed 
the application's operations um, and its security and so forth. So host era operating system, client server era, I say database, web era app server, got to know that market really, really well. We don't know yet what the control point is in the cloud era. I don't think we do. I think we're going to discover it soon. I think we're talking maybe, a, maybe the next year because there are some ideas emerging about control planes that are you know, very, very interesting and look, uh, look like they might provide this, uh, this control point. The existence of a control point and a market for this control point is crucial because that means the, when, when there is availability of, of that product, the whole market moves to it. And then we, and then we have, you know, we got to a real uh, point of maturity with web applications once people got to application servers. They became, the application server market was a rallying point, it was a way to get, a way to base your architecture, and, and a lot of people built enormous portfolios built on that. When we get to the control point in the cloud era, the same thing will happen. It'll be student body left, and, and, uh, and we're off to the races. Um, the into this, the, one of the things we've got to recognize about these eras is that the integration requirements for each one of these eras are different. Um, and I, I assert that in the microservices, in the cloud era, and this, you know, with, with microservices and containers, the key uh, integration technologies here are messaging, events, event-based uh, architectures, and trust the ability to, to integrate across trust boundaries. I think those are the key, those are the key problems, those are the key opportunities. Um, I should hasten to say, I'm not asserting that messaging is brand new, it's not. It's just really important now, more important than it was in the prior eras. I'm also not asserting that ETL or EDI are going away, they're not. But they're not crucial technologies for the cloud era to, for us to realize our, our goals within the cloud era. They are legacy and they are things to integrate with. So this is additive, not you know, winners and losers, but I think we have to, I think we have to be real clear about what are the, cr the critical technologies and integration that we need in this era, because that'll help us define then what, what are the control points, what are the, pro the platforms we're actually gonna use? You know, what are they gonna look like? What are they gonna be? Okay, let's shift gears away from markets a little bit, although I'll come back to, to products, um, to uh, a broader look at, you know, if in this new era, uh, if we're going to have built-in integration, integration that's built into application development, uh, does that mean, what does that mean for our people, our processes, and uh, the products that we use? Um, I think it means we're going to need some new folks, some new skills, some new talents. We're going to need some new processes, and we're going to need uh, some new products. So first, a so, you know, little bit more specifically. First, um, integration uh, in a lot of our clients remains an add-on activity. And when they, even, even today, when they approach, um, uh, you know, um, microservices design or API design, they're thinking of it as kind of a stovepipe or a, a uh, oh, there's a lot, still a lot of point-to-point -point kind of tactical uh, work that goes on. This has to shift. When we build an API and, and you know, and, and, and provide access to data or function, or when we provide a microservice, say, that opens up access to our SAP implementation or, or the data that's running in our mainframe, that is a building block for software that's going to be provided by lots and lots of developers within our uh, ecosystem. Some of them working inside our organization, some of them working outside, some of them are customers. We gotta, we've got to start really, this is, this is like the SOA promise. We've got we've to really double down on that. Some companies were able to do that with SOA, but a lot of companies still don't. So integration has to, we've got to, really reposition it as if we're going to be doing digital business, this thing we all talk about, these assets are crucial. They are, they are shared, they are consistent, they are the value, often the value that we provide to our customers and our partners. They, they become fundamental. 
Um, so we've got to shift the whole, the whole mindset. Now, one of the ways I think about this is integration, again, is oftentimes seen tactically. It's like it's a necessary evil. It's a way that we need to get data into an application and so forth. But a lot of the scenarios that we're building, in fact, are, uh, involve integration at the core. These are, these are s full scenarios, not just silos of, you know, uh, uh, you know, applications that address a siloed function. What I'm showing here is a, some research uh, that we did on how do you build insights to a, a, a cycle that takes you from an insight to an action and, and automate that process. We call this digital decisioning uh, these days. And so, so you can see on the chart, you got, you're certainly ingesting data. There's a whole lot of analysis you need to do to get to that insight. Who is the customer? What are they doing? What is, what is, the, what is the problem? What, you know, what, what's going on is the, is the typical case. Um, then you're going to feed that into some kind of a decision. What do we do about important insights? Do we, if the customer is in trouble, do we uh, launch a chat? Do we dial 911? Do we, uh, if they're not in trouble, do we make an offer? Do we say something uh, to them to further the engagement? It's a decision to take an action. Um, and then, of course, we have to implement the action. We have to implement it through whatever channels are uh, appropriate. Um, we, have to implement, uh, we have to implement through whatever means we want to do, whether it's through a process or a notification or a commerce site or what have you. And then lastly, we need to measure that, the, that outcome. Did that action actually help us? Did it... Is there a correlation to um, net promoter scores? Did it raise our profitability? Did it increase revenues? What did it do? Because we're doing, we're cranking through lots and lots of these insight to action cycles. What do they actually do for us? Well, this is integration writ large. There's integration all throughout this, this scenario. Um, some tough integration uh, issues, depending on how you build this. If, you, if you're not thinking about the scenario, you'll miss the opportunity. You'll just focus, like a lot of people do, on, oh, it's a big data problem. It's, big data is only useful if it tells us something to do, something that we need to react to. That means there's all these downstream effects that we've got we've to incorporate into our, our scenario. So a flip in terms of the way we think about uh, applications, not just, oh, I got to gather some data to support this operation and track that data. No, what's the scenario? What, is the, what are we doing for the customer? What's the full scenario? Not to say you have to build the whole thing uh, you know, in one shot, but get to that scenario and think about the integration that you need uh, under the covers to get there. Expand our, we've got to start to expand our integration portfolio. Some of the older uh, products, some of, the, some of the legacy products, much more oriented to the siloed world, the bolt-on world. We've got to start building in uh, you know, integration. That means that we're seeing uh, people start to adopt new products, open up their portfolios, start to look at these products. These are the two cloud integration and uh, API management and, and development portals associated with API management that are particularly hot. Uh, in, in our surveys, as, as you can see, the growth, particularly of API management, is you know from in just a year is really substantial. Uh, this is this is uh, plans to adopt. Um, this again, I think, is further evidence that people are that developers are progressing. They're they're looking at other ideas. They're looking at newer ways, new ways of of employing um, uh, integration. Um, and then I think. As we uh, getting to this, harkening back to the control point discussion that, that I raised earlier, I think we have to start to really push hard on the integration capabilities of the application platforms that we adopt. So a great example for me, I see this all the time, is people, again, are very jazzed about business process again. Um, not necessarily be big BPM, big contracts, but business process that they can use to automate uh, operational uh, processes. They never look at integration. Those pro the products that they're looking at, are, they have process modeling, they've got some integration in them, but boy, if you're going to be pushing hard on multiple data sources, real time, lots of volume, those products aren't, they don't give you what you need for, to run that kind of integration. So they, we, we, we're constantly pushing on that. What, 
what are you likely to need? What sounds to, sounds to us like you're going to need a lot more integration, heavy lifting there. Look, are you even looking at the features in, that, in, that pro, in those products that you're evaluating? Are you even looking at integration? You have to. Same with um, CICD. I think we're reaching a point with, with uh, software development teams where, you know, the price of me being able to get, have, have the latest and greatest tool in terms of integration work that I have to do that doesn't, by the way, produce business value, it, it enables business value, that price is getting too high. I want to start to look for uh, platforms and or uh, tool chains that where I don't have to do that integration, and it's good enough that I can that I can uh, I can do what I need to do. But they're looking at the the uh, CI/CD and, and modern software delivery as a platform problem, not just as a, a as a, a collection of tools um, that I somehow uh, weave together, um, and so on. I think I think essentially we're going to have to all start to push real hard on. The integration functionality that in the in the software platforms that we uh, that we use and keep a close eye uh, you know keep an eye out for what is this new market that's going to come out uh, in in control points um, now when in looking at um, platforms and looking at the capabilities of platforms we've got as I said we got to look at scale and we got to look at security um, because these are these are big risks. Uh, in, in any software development platform. And as I say, a lot, of, a lot of the clients I'm working with who are looking at higher level platform you know, uh, ideas like process or like web or commerce don't push hard enough on the integration capabilities that they're going to need, either from that platform provider or from a partner. Um, we also have to look for openness. We also have to look for um, products that, are, that don't lock me out of useful capabilities that I can that I will need to integrate use them to integrate so we want to look for standards certainly but we want to look for business model as well like you know there are a lot of integration uh, products out there that are now getting acquired by companies who have vested interests in other products well how open are they that's a good question that's something to, to really push on um, you know Again, take it for what it's worth. I've been in middleware for a long, long time. I bought the Switzerland idea a long time ago. I think it's real. So uh, you may not agree with me, but I think it's real. Um, address new services. Um, machine learning, so you could say, is in, its, is in its infancy. A lot of people very, very excited. Not a lot of implementation. Not a lot of production implementation yet outside of certain ISVs. But boy, is that going to come on. The pla these platforms need to allow us to integrate with interesting machine learning services, period. Um, they got to make it easy for us to integrate, hopefully, because we don't, again, we're developers. We're trying to produce business value. We don't want to be doing a lot of scut work. Um, there's uh, this thing called blockchain I've heard is really cool that's coming along. Um, you know, half joking. Look, the blockchain scenarios are starting to, are starting to emerge. It looks like a lot of blockchain implementations will be hosted. Uh, they will be delivered through a SaaS model. We've got to be able to get access to that, those capabilities. And God knows what else comes along. I mean, we're in, a, we're in a, just an unprecedented time of, of innovation. Um, we need to be able to address these new services from within whatever platforms we choose to, uh, to do our, our applications. Then lastly, uh, we've got to raise developer productivity in Integration. Integration's hard. Uh, it's like, you know, in a lot of developers, they struggle with it, particularly when it's complicated. It can be very difficult. That's why we have specialists. That's why specialists have grown up over the years. We've got to see through tooling and through, um, through uh, you know, perhaps education, through other, other means, integration's got to, got to get easier. Uh, we've got to make it easier to, so that more developers can, can, uh, can be successful. Um, I think we're going, to be, we're going to see that issue addressed through uh, tooling through, uh, that, that will range uh, between tools that are, that are uh, built for people who code, developers who code, all the way to developers who prefer not to code who use what we call low-code approach. 
Um, so this is where I put uh, ballerina. Ballerina is a language that builds in distribution. It builds in integration ideas. Uh, you, there are some other, uh, pro uh, other languages and projects out uh, and, and some frameworks out there that do the same thing. They make, they make distribution part of the developer's concepts that they're working with, not a bolt-on that they have to then figure out how to, how to, uh, how to work with. Um, on the visual side, I'm showing some, some tools here, uh, some approaches here that involve mapping. Uh, mapping's a really, uh, process and mapping are really handy concepts um, that you can create visual tools to, uh, to address. Um, people working, who, who people can understand flows, they can understand maps between information, they can understand sequences, and those can be surfaced uh, to, again, to make, make things easier through visual tools. And you know what? Some developers are going to use both. They're going to use visual tooling when it's easier for them, or they're going to, and, but they'll default down to a language, uh, to do a programming language to do their work when that's the most efficient for the way for them to work. So some good, uh, some good um, uh, developments there. Hopefully we see a lot, lot more, um, a lot more progress. <clears throat> this is a, a comment about the people. Um, we identified a while ago a, uh, a concept that we call the hollowing out concept. We borrowed this from economics. Uh, people have been talking about hollowing out in relation to, say, Rust Belt America, uh, you know, for some time. If you apply the hollowing out idea to uh, software jobs, to IT jobs, you find that we do this all the time. Um, what it, here's what happens. We're in a new era. We've got a set of people with a set of skills. We've got big markets um, with people who are specialists in integration, for example. They're dev integration developers. Um, we come in, we start, we start introducing tools that allow just regular developers, business developers, to do integration. They peel some of that work away from the specialists. We start to automate certain forms of integration. We start to peel away that work from those integration specialists. Eventually, those integration specialists, that role gets hollowed out. We don't need as many of those folks anymore. The, are they, do they go away? Do we just say goodbye to them? No. What we say to them is, you got to learn some new skills. You're the experts in the next big, uh, the next big application pattern. So go learn event-based architecture. That's hard. Our business developers struggle with it. You become the expert, and you, you, you run point on that, on that set of developments for us. Um, you become a distributed system developer. Um, then the work, continues, you know, the work continues to bleed into automation, bleed away from automation and into, into other developers, into mainstream developers, and we end up with new markets. So the, the event-based app specialists, those people are worth a fortune. Um, they are, they are so, their expertise is so scarce and so valuable, they're worth a fortune. Not so much the integration, the old style integration developer, don't need as many. And then the developers uh, take, up, you know, take up some of that work. So this is happening, this is going to happen, it's inevitable, it always happens. It's important to recognize it, um, particularly if you're a manager. Um, and then governance, uh, lastly, is, is going to become really important here. Governance in this era, in the cloud era, we're learning a lot about. I don't think we've got all the, I don't think we've got all the, I don't think we've written the books on this yet. But we can recognize that governance in this era is far more decentralized than it was in the, in the prior eras. There, were, there, were, there was a chance where you could centralize, say, on EAI and concentrate on EAI or something like that and really leverage your skills and leverage the connectors. Now it's too distributed. So how do you govern in that environment? Um, it's very, very different. Um, again, we don't have all the answers, but we gotta recognize, um, we gotta recognize the, the, that, that it's happening and start to, start to figure out what the answers are. Um, on, on people, uh, another last point on people is that every organization has a variety of developers in it. Every big enterprise has a variety of developers in it. Some are doing high code, they work in Java, they work in JavaScript, they work in Python or Go or what have you. Um, there's a bunch of people that are, a bunch of developers that are saying, no, I want to do low code. So they do a minimum of coding and they'll use something like Salesforce, force.com or something like that. And then there's a whole bunch of people that are business people and they're not doing code at all. 
They're, they're looking for visual tools strictly they t you know, to do their work. The point is that all these folks work together. And if we're going to, and all of them are going to be hitting integration really hard. And the best possible outcome here is, is for these folks to support one another. So if we've got, for example, people building APIs and, and uh, you know, high-code high folks building APIs to our mainframe applications or what have you, if they can create components, if they can express those APIs and components, those components can be consumed by the low-code and the no-coders. And if the no-coders and the low-coders can use their tools to, to do prototypes, essentially, the high coders don't have to deal with those awful Word documents that we get for requirements. They get assets. Here's what it looks like. Here's what I need. So we need, I, I'm, I'm portraying, we need community, we need catalogs, we need, we need um, discussion and, and respect, uh, as well as some facilities, in order to, to, uh, to really deliver on this. But this is where we're going. And, and integration, if it's at the, found, if it's at the foundation, uh, We've got to, we've got to uh, make sure that everybody can participate and we're, and we're creating appropriate leverage uh, for all of our developers, whoever they might be. Okay, so um, this is necessarily high level. I mean, I, I, I think we're working from, a, I'm working from a set of, of observations. I think, I'm trusting my gut here, I think I'm right about most of this. Uh, research will now commence and we'll, we'll figure out, you know, we'll figure out where what, what the, the deeper answers are here. But in the meantime, I think there are some things that you should do when you leave the conference here. You're going to be spending a lot of time steeped in integration here. Um, one is, look at your integration labor. Look at your integration skills. You will be hollowed out like everybody else. How are you going to plan for that? What are you going to say to those integration developers? You're going to say, don't need you anymore. Good luck, go work for TIBCO or WSO2. Or are you going to give them a career path and give them the opportunity to become the next thing you need, whether that's an event-based architect or, or what have you? Um, it's a labor strategy. Um, it's, about, it's all about your people. Um, everybody in this room, I imagine, is working on some version of digital business. You've, we've got to bake integration into that strategy and that roadmap the technology we're using, the people, et cetera. Today, for most people, it's an add-on. It's just, that's just, the, that's just the way it is. We gotta bake it in and make it much more fundamental. Um, and this idea of, fun, of, of people collaborating, business people, low coders, coders collaborating, just do it. Find a department, assign a, a coder to that department with a, with a low code environment, typically, obviously, and start to experiment on how these folks can work together. I've seen this work where, where the low coders or the business people, sometimes the business people, actually start to create useful software. So you get more software than you can if just your IT people do it because you don't have enough people. But you got to start somewhere with Get, get these folks together. They'll figure out the right language to use with one another, including F words, uh, but not limited. They'll figure out the support structures. They'll figure out what they know and don't know, and so on and so forth. Um, so just do it. And then it, for developers in the room, I think there's a lot of new uh, expertise out there that will pay you more than you're paid today, pretty much. Um, develop that expertise and really focus on business domains. Again, this is not technology for its own sake. If your company really needs insight to action, go there, help them with that problem, help them in that scenario and in that domain. That's w and develop the, lear the new learning and expertise within that context. You'll create a lot of value for your company and you'll create a lot of value for yourself. So with that, I will hope that I helped. I want to call out my colleagues whose work I've uh, shamelessly stolen in putting this, this presentation together. Um, uh, I think it, one of the things to take away is Forrester's going to be working pretty hard on this the next, uh, next couple of years. So thank you. <laughs>